Hello everyone. In this tutorial session, we will try to solve some problems uh, in relation to block diagrams and signal flow graphs that we have studied in the previous classes. So, to begin with, we will try to draw a simple control system with a plant and a feedback loop. So, this is how the block diagram looks like. So, this is the input Q, it goes with a positive sign into this and this is a control system with transfer function C and then we are adding a disturbance signal along with the control signal, both we take with positive sign and then we have the plant with the transfer function G and we also have a feedback loop with transfer function H and this is the output and uh, just note that for the sake of simplicity we are uh, just ignoring the Laplace thing but everything is in Laplace domain. So, uh, these are in fact C of s, G of s and H of s which we are representing as C, H and G for the sake of simplicity. So, what we will try to do here is we will try to find the transfer function. So, here transfer function there are actually two input signals that you have to notice one is the normal input signal that you know and there is another disturbance signal which you do not know. So, we can find the transfer function both with respect to both these inputs. So, that is we can find out what is y of s by u of s and then we can also find out y of s by d of s. So, not only finding the transfer function what we will do is we will try to show that y of s is actually a response due to the input and the disturbance when they act individually while the other is completely 0. So, while doing this what we do is while finding out this transfer function we will make d 0 and while finding out this transfer function we will make u 0. And then finally, we will try to find out the overall transfer function using superposition. So, as these are parts, I will call them y1 and y2. So, this is y1 is the response when u alone is acting, and y2 is the response when d alone is acting. Now, so to find out y1 by u1, we make this 0, and so our block diagram changes. So, this part goes off completely and no, sorry y1 by u1 we make d0. So, this part goes off completely and what I will be remaining with is something like this. So, we are taking a negative feedback. So, this is y1. Now, this is a very simple feedback loop and we know the transfer function of it directly. So, y1 by u is nothing but the forward loop transfer function c into g by 1 plus c into g into h the feedback transfer function. Now, what we will do is for the sake of simplicity we will even take h is equals to 1. So, then our transfer function becomes C g by 1 plus C g ok. So, this is 1. Now, you will find the other transfer function by making this 0. So, when we make that 0, we will get a diagram like this. So, 
put this as C because it's a negative feedback and take it as minus H. So C and H go into the same loop because this completely vanishes and now this is Y2. So again this is a feedback loop and we can take the transfer function to be Y2 by D is equals to G by 1 plus G C H right. Now as we took H to be 1 we can just write it as G by 1 plus G C. So this is my second transfer function. Now my overall response y can be actually written as y1 plus y2 by principle of superposition and so if I take y1 plus y2 which will be so y1 is q times cg by 1 plus cg plus d times g by 1 plus cg. So, this is nothing but ucg plus dg by 1 plus cg. So, that is the overall response of the system. Now, if we even do the same thing normally, if you take the complete system and try to find the overall response, that is what you will be getting. So, this is a kind of verification of the superposition principle using this block diagram. Now what we will do is, we will take up a slightly complex block diagram of a system and then try to find its transfer function and then we will convert the block diagram into a signal flow graph and then we will again find the transfer function. So we will have a comparison of how difficult it is to find the transfer function using the block diagram directly and then using the signal flow graph using the mass and gain formula. So this is the block diagram that we take. So as you can see this is a pretty much complicated block diagram and it has 
about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 blocks. Each block has its own transfer function and you can see there are 3 feedback loops and 1 parallel combination as well. Now what we will do is, we will simplify this block diagram using the rules of block diagram algebra. And so how do we begin with? The first thing you can observe is, this is a feedback loop which we can easily simplify. This is a parallel and this is also another feedback loop. But there is a small complication here. So this point and this point are slightly off positions for us to easily apply the feedback formula that we know. So what we can do is, we can shift this here. And once we shift that, we can easily find out or simplify these blocks and find out their overall transfer function. So once we transfer that block, this is what we get. So I will only draw this part of the transfer of the block diagram and see how it looks like once we shift that. So once I shift that, the point comes here, but for shifting that, there is something which we need to compensate. If you look at here, what is the signal that is coming out? Whatever the signal, say if I call this has some, the signal at this point is A. So the signal here will be A times G3. Now if I shift this from here to here, I will be getting only A. I will be losing out on this G3. So what I will do is, I will put it here, H2 times G3. So this, whatever I lost, this gain by shifting this point to here, I will be compensating it by including it in the feedback transfer function. So I will, this transfer function is now H2 G3 and everything else remains the same. So now we have a simple kind of a diagram this point here and this thing. So what we will do is, we will apply the rules that we already know. We will find out the transfer function of this block, this block and this block. So this will be G4 by 1 plus G4 H1 and this will be just the summation G3 plus G5 and this will be G2 by 1 plus G2 H2. Now once I do this, I can redraw my whole block diagram in a much simpler fashion. It is looking like this. So this will be G2 and G3 as H2 and G3 because this G3 is got multiplied here when we shifted this point.
So, this is how the simplified block diagram looks like. So, we just have g 1 coming here and this reduction going into g 2 by 1 plus g 2 g 3 h 2 and this parallel block going as g 3 plus g 5 and this feedback loop going as g 4 by 1 plus g 4 h 1. So, now we have two more simplifications to do, one is the cascade of all these four blocks and then applying the feedback law, right. So, once I apply that, so the cascade thing will be something like this, G 1 times G 2 by 1 plus G 2 G 3 H 2 times G 3 plus G 5 times G 4 by 1 plus G 4 H 1. So, this will be in a single block now, I can just add a unity feedback to this. So, now I have a very simple feedback loop and I can apply the feedback loop formula and get the transfer function. So, the overall transfer function will be like this. So, I am doing all the simplification and then giving you the final answer. You can do the simplification yourself and check. So, this will be the overall transfer function of the system. So, that is what we did was we started with a very complicated block diagram and then we used the rules that we already studied in the previous class and tried to simplify the whole block diagram and finally arrived at a transfer function. Now, what we will do is we will draw this block diagram in terms of its signal flow graph and derive the same thing and see if both are equal or not.
So, this is how the signal flow graph looks like. So, while converting a block diagram to signal flow graph, one should be very careful to ensure that some branches are not missed out like this. So, when you go from G3 to G5, there is one takeoff point followed by a summer and so you cannot take it to be one node. So, every takeoff point and every summer should have its own node and because there is no gain over this, we will take a gain of 1. So, similarly when you write negative feedback, you should ensure that you put the minus sign here because there is no summer kind of thing in the signal flow graph, the negative sign goes into the gain. And this we was discussed in the class that you should add a branch to ensure that your input and output are as per the defined as per their definitions. So, now this is how the signal flow graph looks like and now what we will do is we will apply Mason's gain formula and try to derive the transfer function. So, to begin with, so what are the forward paths? One clear forward path is from u to y, when we go we have g1, g2, g3, g4. Another forward path is g1, g2, g5, g4 and y. And so, there are no other forward paths. So, this graph has only two forward paths. Now, what about the loops? One loop is this. So, and another loop is G2, G3 minus H2. And another loop is G1, G2, G3, G4 with unity feedback. And you should be careful that there is an also another loop with G5 that is G1, G2, G5 g4 with negative feedback. So, generally people miss out on this, so we should be careful here. So, now we have the forward paths and the loops. Now, we will go to the non-touching loops. So, out of four loops, you look at these two loops, these are not touching each other, they do not have any common nodes or branches. So, among the non touching loops, we have L1, L2, and G2, G3, G4, H1, H2. And if you observe, there are no other non-touching loops because this loop and this loop are touching, this and this is touching and even with G5, these three are touching each other. So, there are no other non-touching loops. And if you even go to three non-touching loops, there is nothing, there are no three loops which are not touching. So, this is where we stop. Now, we all have all the required components to substitute in the Mason's gain formula. So, we looked at the Mason's gain formula giving us the transfer function is given by sigma k is equals to 1 to n p k delta k over delta. So, now we know both p k and before going to delta k, we need what is delta. So, we will define what is delta. Delta 
delta s as per the definition it is 1 minus the sum of individual loops. So, I will take a plus sign because all of them have a negative and I can uh, simply add them up. So, these are all the individual loops plus the products of the non touching loops. So, we have only one set of non touching loops, I will just add it here. So, this is delta. So, what about delta 1? So, if I take the first forward path, there is no loop that is actually not touching that forward path. So, my delta 1 is simply 1 and even if I take the second forward path, this case is the same. So, my delta 2 is also equals to 1. Now, I can simply substitute everything into this Mason's gain formula and what I will be getting is the same transfer function. So, you can simply observe Thus, this delta is nothing but the denominator which we got here and if you just add up the forward paths, it is nothing but the numerator that we got because delta k is 1 in both the cases. So, this is how you got the transfer function in both the cases and the most important point to note here is when you have a signal flow graph, it is actually very easy to derive the transfer function. In this case, you have to do lots of computations, lot of simplifications and before you could arrive this at this transfer function, but here it is very simple and even if there are more complicated block diagrams, it is always observed that signal flow graph does very well in finding out the transfer function. So, that is the advantage here. And now for the last problem of this tutorial, we will try to find out a signal flow graph from a network directly. So, we were told that apart from finding out from the block diagram, we can also find out the signal flow graph from the network equations and that is what we will try to do in the next problem. So, I will take a network with some RLC components. So, this is the network that I am taking, I have an input source V i, two resistors R 1 and R 2 and one capacitor C and an inductor L and our output variable is we defined it as the voltage across the resistor R 2. So, here I take the branch currents to be I 1 and this branch current to be I 2. So, this will be simply I 1 minus I 2. So, we will be dealing with these variables. So, first what we will do is we will write down the equations based on the Kirchhoff's laws that we know and so the voltage here also I am defining it as V 1. So, this will be anywhere V naught. 
So, what is my VIFS? So, I am directly writing everything in Laplace domain because now we are comfortable with writing down network equations in S domain directly. So, my VI of S is nothing but R1 times I1 of S plus V1 of S. So, this is equals to this plus this. And my V1 of S I can write it as 1 by SC times I1 of S minus I2 of S. and V naught of S can be written as R 2 times I 2 of S. So, we have these three equations. Now, while drawing the signal flow graph, you have to go from V i to V naught. So, in between as we said the nodes are actually the system variables. So, we include all these variables as nodes i 1, i 2. So, it, so, the easiest way to do it is always put it in the order in which they appear in the series circuit. So, it is i 1, v 1, i 2 and v naught. So, so, first I will put i 1. V one I two and V naught. So again everything is in S domain, you are just using the variables directly without representing S. So how do we connect these nodes using the signal flow graph? As we said, we are using the equations to find out what will be the signal flow graph. So I have certain equations which relate these variables. Now, I need to find the right gains which will connect these things. So, firstly, what is the connection between V i and I 1? So, V i is nothing but R 1 times I 1. Okay. So, because I will be writing I 1 in terms of V i, I need to reconvert this equation first. So, what is I 1 of S? nothing but V i minus V 1 divided by R 1, right. So, my I 1 is depending on V i and V 1. So, what is the factor with which it is depending on V i is 1 by R 1. So, my gain on this will be 1 by R 1 and with a negative 1 by R 1 it is depending on V 1. So, I will write it as feedback. Because this is appearing after I 1, I will put it as a feedback. Okay. So, now what is the relation between I 1 and V 1? So, we know that V 1 is I 1 minus I 2 by S C, right. So, V 1 is depending on I 1 with a factor 1 over S C and it is depending on I 2 with a factor of minus 1 by S C. So, I will put minus 1 by S C. Now, what is the relation of I 2 and V 1. So, we already know this relation, what we will do is we can take another relation as well which will actually give us a nicer this thing. So, we will take V 1 to be L s times 
I 2 of s plus V naught. This is fine, right? I can write, I can because this is current I 2 and this is an inductor, I can write it as L times s into I 2 of s plus the voltage here which is V naught. So, why did I write it in this fashion? Because I have to observe that in the nodes I took, I 2 is appearing between V 1 and V naught. So, it will be easy to draw the signal flow graph if I have I 2 in terms of V 1 and V naught, right. So, what is I 2 in terms of V 1 and V naught? One by L S terms V E one of S minus V naught of S. Okay. So I two is depending on V one with a factor one by L S. So I can simply connect this and it is depending on V naught with a factor minus 1 by ls. Now finally, what is V naught? V naught is simply R 2 times I 2. I can simply write R 2 here. So, my V naught will be simply R 2 times I 2. Now, if you look at the signal flow graph, this will exactly represent all the equations that we have written here and so there is nothing that is missing the complete network is actually coming into this signal flow graph. So, now what we will do is we will try to find out the transfer function. Earlier we used to apply all the this thing and do elimination and find out the transfer function. Now, because we have a signal flow graph we can apply Meissen's gain formula and find out what is the transfer function. So, as you can see there is only one forward path. and its gain is 1 over a square times r 1 and this is r 2 is on the top r 1 l and c. So, this is my forward path gain and then what about the loops? I have 3 loops here right. One is minus 1 by s r 1 c this loop I have another loop which is minus 1 by s square l c and the third loop is minus r by r 2 by s l right. So, we have 3 loops and 1 forward path. So, what are the non touching loops? So, these 2 are touching, these 2 are touching, but this and this are not touching. So, I can write L1, L3, which is R2 by S square R1 LC. Okay. So, now simply we apply the Mason's gain formula to get the overall transfer function which is okay. before the Mason's gain we also need to find out what is delta. So, I will write down what is delta here 1 minus so because everything has a minus I will put a plus 1 by S R 1 C plus 1 by S square L C plus R 2 by S L plus this one R 2 by S square R 1 L C. Okay. So, this is my delta. Now, once we have and what about delta 1? 
delta 1 should be 1 because there is no loop which is actually not touching the forward path. So, when you go from here to here every loop is being touched. So, delta 1 is 1. So, what will be the overall transfer function is simply P 1 delta 1 by delta which is nothing but this is P 1 divided by this whole delta. So, that will give you you can just simplify it and find out the overall transfer function. So, instead of doing all the analysis and trying to eliminate everything and finding out what is V naught by V i, we can find simply draw the signal flow graph and directly get the transfer function. So, that is it for the tutorial today, thank you.